Hi, my name is Nick, and in this short video, we're going to look at the basics of venipuncture. This is only a basic introductory overview for medical students based at our hospital before attending a practical session, and as such, is not inclusive of all you need to know about it. You must always follow your local policy when performing this procedure. As venipuncture is an invasive procedure, infection is a risk, so it's performed by maintaining a sepsis throughout. This involves identifying critical parts of the device that, if becoming contaminated, are most likely to cause infection, usually termed key parts. These key parts should be protected and not touched or come into contact with anything other than other key parts or key sites. The process of doing this is termed the non-touch technique. Confirm you've got the correct patient by checking the blood request form against the patient's ID band. Explain the procedure and gain consent to perform it. Venipuncture is usually performed in the larger, straighter veins in the antecubital fossa. Blood should not be taken from an arm where IV fluids are running as this will dilute your blood sample and produce inaccurate lab results. You should also check for other relative and absolute contraindications to performing this procedure. In the preparation area, gather the equipment. You'll need a trolley, a tray, something to clean them with, a needle system, blood sample bottles of the appropriate type, something to clean the skin with, gauze, a disposable tourniquet, a sharps bin, an apron, a pair of non-sterile disposable gloves, hazard bags and blood request forms. Wash your hands with soap and water using the seven step process and then put on an apron. Clean both your trolley and the tray thoroughly with an appropriate wipe or if they're visibly dirty use detergent and water first. As you've been cleaning, wash your hands. Open the equipment into the tray taking care to ensure that any key parts do not get contaminated. Pre-vacuum your sample bottles by pulling back on the plunger until it clicks and then breaking the end off. Since you've been walking through doors, touching things which are potentially contaminated, wash your hands. Apply the tourniquet about a hand's breadth above the proposed puncture site. Select a nice, visible, bouncy vein. Release the tourniquet for the patient's comfort and to prevent damage to the blood cells. Wash your hands and put on your gloves. Reapply the tourniquet. Clean the site vigorously using a crosshatch motion for 30 seconds and then leave it to dry for a further 30 seconds. During this time, remove the protective cover from the needle. Remember, you've exposed a key part. Tethering the skin with your non-dominant hand will help stop the vein from moving around. And then place the needle tip at the proposed puncture site at an angle of around 30 degrees to the skin with the bevel facing upwards. Warn the patient, then advance the needle so that it pierces the skin and enters the vein. With some systems, you'll see a flashback of blood to show that you're in the vein. Hold the needle steady as movement will cause pain and then push each sample bottle into the holder. Since you vacuum the bottle, the blood will be sucked into it. Once it's full, remove the sample bottle and invert it several times to mix it. The process can be repeated for as many sample bottles as you need. There will be an order of drawing which the bottle should be filled which you should be aware of. Once you've filled your last sample bottle, release the tourniquet and place some gauze over the puncture site but don't put pressure on it yet. Remove the needle and only then press down with the gauze. Activate any sharp safety system before placing the needle straight in the sharp spin. In most cases, applying pressure for about 5 minutes will prevent a hematoma from forming. Filling in the patient's details at the bedside will reduce the chance of any error being made. Then, place the sample bottles in a hazards bag along with the request form. Clean up after yourself and wash your hands before sending the samples off to the lab. 
So that's only the basic introduction to venipuncture in five minutes. There's a lot more to it than this, and you should attend a practical workshop within your area of work for more detailed information and for advice on local policy.